Now let's look at the question of who actually supports or opposes free trade. Empirically speaking, we're going to ask, what are the predictors of pro- or anti-trade sentiment? And for this, there's a very good data set drawing on over 20,000 individuals from 23 countries. And this is all taken from a paper by Maida and Danny Roderick called Why Are Some People and Countries More Protectionist Than Others? One very good predictor of how much an individual will support free trade is that individual's amount of human capital. More human capital, more education, those predict support for free trade. You'll note this is consistent with the view that maybe better educated people are wiser, but it's also consistent with a more selfish look at whether or not people support trade. So if you think of a country which has a lot of people with high human capital, in essence, according to Heckscher Olin, those countries are supporting goods with a lot of high human capital embedded in them, and you might expect individuals in those countries to support free trade. And in the broader data set, human capital predicts pro-trade views, but only in wealthy countries. In poorer countries, such as, say, the Philippines, human capital, in fact, correlates with anti-trade views. And this is also consistent with the heckscher olin mechanism. Think of a poor country as specializing in exporting a lot of goods containing a lot of unskilled labor. So maybe in poorer countries, it's unskilled labor that benefits more from trade, and the skilled labor arguably loses out because it means it has to compete more with the wealthier countries. What also predicts support for free trade is when individuals have an income which is high relative to the national average. What other features characterize or predict protectionists? Well, there are at least three. One is high attachments to neighborhood and community. The second is a lot of national pride. And the third is a strong belief in national interest as driving policymaking. When you pose related questions to free traders, free traders will reflect a viewpoint which might be considered more cosmopolitan, that is, looking at the interests of the entire world rather than just a single home nation. It's interesting that a lot of the predictors of free trade support within nations also seem to predict free trade support across nations. So, for instance, in this data set, the country with the greatest intellectual support for free trade is the Netherlands, which is a relatively wealthy and also relatively cosmopolitan country. And also, in this data set, the country which supports free trade the least in terms of expressed opinion, well, that's Bulgaria, and they also, within this data set, have an income well below the average. It's quite striking within the data that men tend to be more pro-trade and more pro-free trade than women. We also can consider the relevance of sector-specific models of international trade. So to the extent some factors are immobile, the return to that factor will depend what sector it's in. So we find, for instance, perhaps what you would expect, and that is individuals in losing sectors, sectors losing out to foreign trade, those individuals are less likely to be pro-free trade. To read more on this topic of public opinion and how it affects policy and also policies about trade, I also would recommend some writings by Brian Kaplan, his articles and also his book, The Myth of the Rational Voter. For the latest data on public opinion toward free trade right now, it's useful to just Google public opinion free trade.